Uh, I want to welcome you all from uh, balmy and smoky Northern California. Uh, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for our kind of deeper dive into Jupiter's latest product, the J400. Uh, my name is Justin Chong. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Jupiter. Uh, I'm joined by Devin Wright, who is our Senior Product Manager and a 12-year veteran of Jupiter Systems, uh, followed by probably the Starbucks show, which is the J400. Uh, what, we're, what we're showing back here is the front view of the, the system itself, and then the rear view where all the magic happens. A uh, couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, we are going to be switching cameras a little bit. We've got a video wall and a demonstration set up. So in order to kind of maximize your experience, what I would suggest is in Zoom, change your uh, settings to active speaker mode and then enlarge that active speaker image so you can see a bigger picture of both um, the video wall, um, kind of the, the Q&A and the, the demonstration we're gonna be talking to when, when we point to the props behind us, uh, as well as the presentation and the UI that you, Devin's gonna be showing a little bit later. So again, switch to active speaker mode and then enlarge that speaker image uh, so you can kind of see both of what's been going on. We are recording the session, however, um, the only thing that would show up from any participant is the Q&A part. Uh, so today, quick overview. We are going to talk a little bit about Jupiter uh, as a company in our history and, and our, our product family because the J400 addresses some different parts of the market. Uh, we expect some uh, new people here, which we're, we love uh, and appreciate you all coming to this. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about Jupiter as a whole, as a company. We're going to do an overview of the J400 uh, technically, um, as well as kind of the configuration stuff. Talk a little bit about some of the use cases, and then Devin's going to demonstrate the user interface um, as we kind of go through that. And then we're going to finish up with uh, a question and answer session. Uh, please use the Q&A feature in uh, your Zoom toolbar. That will allow us to kind of monitor what's going on. Um, and get to as many questions as we can as, as time permits. With that, let's kind of jump into the presentation itself. So why Jupiter Systems? We've been the premier uh, supplier in the video wall processing space since we invented the first video wall processor in 1981. Um, which says something, a technology company that, that's been around for 40 years, providing the same kind of level of support um, and product and innovation as, as throughout the kind of really the whole technology era, if you will. We've got a global footprint with more than 25,000 installations across somewhere north of 50 countries. We are display agnostic. Uh, our video wall processors, everything from the J400 <coughs> up through our, our highest end pixel net systems, don't really care what manufacturer uh, of display technology we're plugging into, nor do we care about the, the, the type. So we can support everything from direct view LED, LCD monitors, panels, uh, cubes, projectors, you name it, we can drive it. All of Jupiter's technology has been developed for mission critical 24 seven applications. That's our heritage. That's kind of our core business is in that command and control space. And we build and support our products to meet those really demanding applications. Uh, we are designed, manufactured, and assembled in, in the United States of America, and we are an, in, an independent U.S. corporation. As some of you may know, we were uh, owned by InFocus uh, up to earlier this year. We have since uh, spun back out, and we are an independent company at this point. We offer airtight security. Um, one of our heritage is, you know, Jupiter plays very much in military governmental agencies, both the US, in the United States and domestically, and we're deployed across hundreds of different you know, international and domestic governmental agencies with the kind of security um, and eye towards uh, reliability that those agencies demand. Uh, we also offer a unique critical solution enabling unified communication in the control room through our Canvas uh, overarching software platform. Again, we are designed, manufactured, supported, and serviced uh, in Hayward, out of Hayward, California. We are an ISO 9001 2015 uh, production facility. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the, our entire portfolio and then we're gonna dive into the J series as, as we move forward through the rest of the presentation. So Canvas is our overarching software collaboration and management platform. Um, it is a Windows-based tool. 
uh, that allows uh, real-time operators to manage their video wall infrastructure, but more than that, also allows collaboration across those operators and across the enterprise, um, both in terms of incident management and kind of video wall management, be it a single wall, be it dozens of walls. Um, Canvas allows the users and the user base to kind of manage that entirety as well as collaborate between them as, as uh, needs to drive that. We have, as we dive into the hardware portion, we have the J-series, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. One thing I do want to note is while we have ported a lot of the Canvas features from the user interface perspective over to the J-series, so it gives you kind of a unified look and feel, J-series does not run Windows or Linux. It is a, an embedded real-time operating system in the, in the hardware itself on the, on the chip. So the entirety of the Canvas solution doesn't port to J-series. It's only in the user interface. The other kind of, um, and we'll talk about why we do that as we go forward for security and speed. Uh, Catalyst is our mainstream product family. It comes in multiple configurations to kind of fit whatever need you want. And it really is the world's leading purpose-built video wall processor. Again, designed for that 24-7, 365 command and control infrastructure, or critical need environment. Finally, we have PixelNet. Uh, we developed PixelNet uh, 10 years ago or so. Uh, we are on our second moving, uh, in exploring our third generation of technology uh, from a hardware perspective and through dozens of revs of the software. Um, it really was the industry's first distributed AV solution uh, with high availability, kind of endless possibilities as to how you configure it. It, it allows you to extend uh, both control input and um, output across uh, a purpose-built network as far as you can stretch a fiber cable. Um, and we've got, uh, we have done webinars on, which are on our YouTube channel on our Catalyst family, as well as our Canvas platform. So if we, you know, I would be not doing justice to those platforms by kind of the, the brief overview I did here, but please take a look at the webinar. Uh, and we can dive into more detail or reach out to your sales rep or sales at jupiter.com and we can discuss in further detail. Picks on that will probably be our next webinar in the next couple of months. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Devin to talk about the J-Series in more detail. Thank you, Justin. Uh, how's it going, everybody? <clears throat> My name is uh, Devin Wright. Uh, like Justin said, I've been with the Jupiter Systems for 10 plus years. Um, I'm um, extremely excited about this product because uh, again, it gets, gets us into more uh, mass market or a larger market. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the content because uh, we have a lot to go over. So I'll be going over the hardware, the software, some of the features that it enables you to do uh, as well. I'll go through a demo. And we're going to talk about a little bit um, what the feature of this product is, uh, kind of high level roadmap, uh, what other hardware we plan to introduce as well. So uh, the J-Series uh, is it's designed to be compact, fast, and reliable. It, uh, we categorize it in the video wall appliance. And so what that means is extremely easy to set up, extremely easy to configure, uh, and it's a set it and forget it model, right? And so once you do all your configuration, uh, which is very easy, uh, you can kind of set it up um, and it's very easy to, to use. For example, the demo I am going to go through later uh, took me about 15 minutes to uh, set up everything uh, from the output resolution uh, video wall side to setting up all the sources and setting up a, qu a few quick layouts. Um, this product the, supports the highest pixel quality, which is RGB 444 uh, pixel transfer from the capture all the way to the output board. Um, it features ultra fast uh, sources. Um, so when you, whether you want to put up windows, you know, close windows, all those interactions are very fast, uh, as well as we support ultra fast uh, layout switching as well, or seamless layout switching, as some people call it. We support uh, resolutions up to 4K, so this includes uh, full HD, obviously SD um, and 720p, as well as custom resolutions on both the input side and the output side. Uh, as Justin mentioned, we are a display agnostic company, and so uh, we support all the different display technologies uh, that are available on the market, which is direct view LED, uh, LCD panels, right, LED panels, right? rear projection cubes, and projectors. Uh, once again, all this product cares about is driving whatever display technology you have at whatever resolution and frame rate you want. 
uh, we're going to have two options uh, for shipping. One is our pre-assembled uh, system. So what that means is uh, you will receive a pre-configured chassis, just like you see here, right? Input and output boards already assembled, has been tested. You get the unit, you set it up, and you're ready to rock. Um, that gets shipped out by our production floor. Uh, the other option is you can have uh, components. So you can have order the chassis, you can have the different boards, and you can assemble it on site. Uh, you can order for your distribution partner or your, um, your channel partner, uh, whoever you use. Uh, so you can do that all on site. Um, it's obviously a little more work on the physical work, but uh, the setup and configuration is extremely easy. And uh, to kind of follow on on that, you can also purchase a pre-configured system. And then as your needs change over time or as your client's needs change over time, you can order different input output cards uh, in order to field upgrade the system without having to buy forklift it out um, and buy an entirely new system. So everything gets shipped out of our uh, Hayward office. Um, so in our production floor, actually right behind this wall. So uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, our Jupiter engineering team has been working on this for a little bit, um, but it's called light speed technology. This is really the core of how pixels get transferred from the input input boards to the output boards. Uh, and this enables a pure hardware architecture. So this enables flexible configuration and can easily be expandable. And so this also uh, has a real-time OS. So on the CPU board, it runs in, in an embedded system. Uh, so in, that means real-time processing. So as a user, whether it's gonna be through the user interface page or through uh, kind of external control like RS-232, um, all the data processing uh, happens in real time. And so that enables it to be really fast and really secure. Uh, it's a modular and flexible design. And so as you, hear, as you see here, there's a lot of different board options. And so this makes it very easy and very flexible and, and makes it very uh, easily expandable. Uh, once again, this feature is RGB 444 pixel quality uh, transfer from the input side to the output side. Um, we support our the layout switching, like I said, is extremely fast. Uh, we have about 16 millisecond layout switching, and so I'll demo that a little bit later. Um, a lot of people consider this seamless switching, but you won't see uh, one or two windows uh, being pulled down, right? Everything happens instantaneously and all at one time. Uh, we, we offer some high availability and redundant options, and so uh, you can have redundant CPU boards or high availability CPU boards. So you have an option of one or two boards. Uh, those are both active-active. Uh, we have hot swappable input and output boards, so uh, you can actually just leave the system on running, right? And you can shove, or you can put in the boards um, that you want to configure, um, and the system will automatically recognize those uh, from the user interface. You do some simple configuration, and you're back up and running without even powering down the system. We have uh, N plus one power supplies as well, and uh, uh, redundant and hot swappable uh, chassis fans. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is this system is HDCP compatible. So any government projects or corporate projects that you may have, right, um, you can put in your TV tuner or any HDCP, HDCP source that you have directly into the system and it will take care of that for you. Some of the features uh, that this uh, product has uh, from a high level is it supports uh, multiple video walls per chassis. So you can have up to four video walls per chassis. Um, so directly from this unit, right, you can have four video walls. Um, the demo I will have here is I configured two video walls. You can have multiple windows per display. So you can have up to four windows per display. It doesn't matter if it's a 1080p display or a 4K display, you can have up to four windows. Uh, it's a, it supports hot swappable input and output boards, right? So if you want to easily expand or service your boards, um, you don't have, ever have to turn off your system. Uh, it supports different connector types. So as you see here, we have DVI um, inputs, interfaces. We have uh, HDMI 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 for 4K60. It is a pure hardware architecture, right? This is, comes from the um, light speed technology and the core, uh, which enables this real-time operating system for real-time processing. We have a very simple, easy to use uh, web-based drag and drop uh, control page. Uh, it supports uh, resolutions up to 4K, once again, uh, up to 4K, so that includes 1920 by 1080 and any kind of custom resolutions that you may have, both on the input 
in the Alpha side. It is HTCP compliant. Uh, it features layout, uh, seamless layout switching, uh, has built-in scalers, so you don't have ever have to worry about what resolution on the input side. You can plug it into the appropriate board. Uh, you drive your displays at the resolution, and from the user interface, you basically say, I want a window this size, and the system all takes care of the scaling internally for you. Uh, I, one thing I do want to mention is it supports dis display tiling. So this does has 4K60 and 4K30 outputs. So um, this does support display tiling, which is uh, kind of we're moving towards uh, a lot of people using that technology natively within displays, and this definitely supports that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the multi-wall configuration. Um, so this chassis supports up to four video walls per chassis. And so uh, you can, those video walls could each have uh, unique geometries, unique resolutions, and also you can share inputs between all the video walls. So for example, if you have a workstation and you have a room that has three or four different video walls in them, right? You can now take that workstation and multicast it out into all four of your video walls um, in real time. Um, there is no frame frame rate loss or anything. Uh, it's all beautiful pixel quality. Uh, each video wall that you have can support different geometries and different resolutions. And obviously that means different display technology that you have. Uh, for example, you can have one video wall that's connected in the chassis be a, a direct view LED wall. You can have another one be uh, LCD panels, and then you can have the other two be uh, single projectors if you want um, in different conference rooms. Uh, so all those are available within the, within the chassis um, as default. Um, there is no licensing. All of that comes uh, available to you once you purchase the hardware. I want to talk a little bit about web-based control because uh, I think this really uh, is unique and this is something we are doing within Jupyter, uh, a big push is we are making everything web-based, right? And so this allows for easy configuration, easy to use, and easy deployment as well. And so this supports all major web browser, and that includes Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. So any type of hardware that you have to manage it, um, you can use any of those web browsers, right, on Linux, uh, Mac, or Windows. Um, the first feature I want to talk about is user management. And so uh, access control is obviously a big thing when it comes to video walls. You don't want anybody to manage the video wall that is not um, appropriate. And so you can have user accounts and uh, you can have a different level of user, user permissions as well. Um, it has um, basic video wall management and window management features like creating windows, deleting windows, moving windows, and resizing windows. Uh, as well as uh, loading layouts and saving layouts. We ported, uh, uh, we have a really cool feature or a really cool feature that we have, which is called Layout Launcher, which we ported from the Canvas side. And it basically mimics or uh, is supposed to represent the a control system. So it's a very easy, simple to use web page. Uh, you basically click a button and it loads a layout for you. Uh, so it's really supposed to have an ease of use feel. And because that's the majority of you cases, people just want to load layouts. From a single, from the single web page um, or control page, you can manage all your video walls that you have. Once again, this supports up to four, four video walls. So when you log in to this page, you have access to all four video walls. You don't have to go to different tabs or anything. All of those are available directly to you in this interface. It also has a uh, open API for third party control, right? So whether you, for example, AMX or Crestron, or even a third party platform, for example, like a traffic management system or a video management system, right? You can control this device. It does have a RS-232 port, as well as you can control it over uh, API or um, the network as well. This does support staging. And so um, if you guys are familiar with kind of the production side of video walls, right? You can edit the video wall before it goes live. Uh, this enables you to do a lot of different things, setting up all your layouts without actively changing what is happening on your wall. So it's a, a really cool feature. Uh, it supports multiple languages. It also has hardware monitoring. Uh, this is important because typically video wall hardware and all the equipment is rack mounted into a server room. 
And this allows you to monitor that information remotely. So whether you're on the network in another room, uh, VPN in if you're a manager, um, especially now during COVID, um, that's really getting really important. Um, all that monitoring uh, is extremely important and all the information is available to you through this webpage. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the use cases. Um, the, the driving kind of imperative for Jupiter to expand our product family out of our traditional command and control space into a, a little bit broader market space um, was kind of how we were envisioning the J series platform. We came up with several use cases and kind of several categories, if you will, but we fully expect um, that you all out there in uh, uh, in our ecosystem and, and in the AV ecosystem in general will come up with kind of new and, and unique features for this. But as we were starting out, we really looked at kind of four. Uh, one really is kind of the appliance based video wall processor aimed at price sensitive environments into places like kind of commercial and corporate applications where our much more feature rich, much more technically complex and uh, technically capable systems, either were not appropriate or were not applicable because the user base just simply couldn't manage them. Um, so things like digital signage, corporate video walls, things along those kind of lines where a much more simplified appliance actually would, uh, would be a better solution for that. Also things like education, houses of worship, other areas where price sensitivity is typically a bigger consideration than maybe something like a feature set or a 24 seven kind of reliability. Um, we built and designed and, and we're going to market and sell this platform um, into those environments where we can start getting reaching into there and, and offering the Jupiter quality while still uh, meeting some of the price constraints that, that some of our customer base may have. Uh, it, we also thought about secure environments because it is an embedded real time operating system. It's much less susceptible to any sort of intrusion than anything that is a Microsoft or a Linux type platform um, by the nature of the, the operating system itself. Also, this can be run completely off the network. Devin said once it, it is a set it and forget it kind of device. Um, if you don't need to make changes as you go through. Uh, and you don't need to extend that that control to an operator that may be on the network. Uh, once you have it set up and, and running as you desire, you can unplug that cable and it's a standalone box um, with really no way in or out. You can control it via RS-232 local, which is a little more secure as well. Also, it is designed for 24 seven operations. So we talked about the redundancy. We talked about the high availability. We talked about the field upgrade ability um, as you're going through the life cycle of the product. Also for time sensitive environments, this very low latency light speed technology um, is a game changer. It's something that um, not only in terms of rotating the layouts and kind of the user inner experience as you're viewing the video wall, but also translating from an input to output is significantly faster because there, there is no OS overhead in the middle and no real compute overhead in the middle. It's input to output. So with that, we're gonna switch over to the demo. Uh, and Devin, I'm gonna hand it to you. I'm you. All right, you're up. All right, everybody, I want to talk about a little bit about the setup that we have going on here. Um, so in front of you, what you should see is the, uh, the login page. So after you log in, this is the control page or the client page um, that represents the video wall. Uh, my web camera is pointed to a video wall. So what you'll see, uh, what you should see is a side by side view of any interaction that I do directly on this web page. Um, you'll see through the webcam and directly onto the video wall. So it should be in real time. Uh, you'll see my user interface affecting what's happening on the video wall. So a uh, couple areas of interest I want to point out on this is uh, in the middle here, what you'll notice is this is where all the window management is. And so we call this mimic because uh, this mimics what is happening on the video wall. And so currently on the video wall, we have four windows. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the hardware. So the hardware is uh, it's running a J400, which is currently rack mounted in our server room. We have four outputs from the J400 
uh, plugging directly into this display. This display has four inputs, so it's kind of a special display. So you can, can, can consider this a two by two video wall. And so that's why you see uh, four windows here. And so um, this middle page is the mimic. So this represents what is happening in real time on the wall. On the left hand side is a list of all the sources. And so this source list automatically gets populated um, depending on how many inputs you have. And so you don't have to do any special configuration. Once you have your input boards in the system, um, this list will automatically be populated. Um, on the top is where you have all your uh, video walls. So currently I have two video walls. One is called main, the other one is called side monitor. Um, and if you have two additional video walls, they'd be here. Um, and this status page is the hardware status page as well. Um, so I'll quickly go through kind of the window management portion of the user interface. So uh, this window, when I highlight it, it has all your handles for resizing. So in real time, what I can do is resize this window. And what you'll notice on the video wall is that window gets smaller. I can move this window around and it's very easy. Uh, I'm using a mouse, uh, so it's very easy to use. Uh, you can load this web page on an iPad or any other mobile device that you have, and it will work. So um, this is a simple drag and drop uh, capability. You can resize these windows uh, any, any size you want. You can have up to four windows per display. And so this allows you to do a lot of the applications like windowing, um, picture in picture, right? So as you see here, this window is in back of all these, uh, in the back of these two bottom windows. So in order to get them on top, what you have to do is right click and say move to the top layer. And as you can see, uh, move to the top layer, then I can move this window around. Uh, so it's very easy to use and I can resize it. Now, if I wanna move this back, I right click and say select to the back. Uh, another ease of use feature that we implemented was uh, you see these lines here. Um, we subdivide automatically each display into four uh, quadrants. And so this window is covering all four quadrants. So uh, if you double click on that window, it'll automatically fill that display or any quadrant that is touching it. So kind of an easy use. Um, it lets you position the windows really easily. Uh, so it's very easy and simple to use interface. Uh, if I want to delete a window, you select the window that you want, you press the X button on the top right, and it closes that window. Now, if I want to add a new source onto the uh, video wall, I simply just select what source I want, drag it over the wall, and it'll automatically fill that display. Once again, you can now resize this, and it's very easy to use. Um, so let's just kind of quickly play with it and then I will save a layout. Okay, so let's say I want my video wall to look like this and I want to save this state of the video wall. Uh, we call them layouts. Uh, industry term might also be a preset or configuration, um, but for all intents and purposes for this webinar, uh, I'll be calling it a layout. So let's uh, save this, um, let's call it demo. Now, now this information automatically gets saved in the system uh, so we can recall that at any, in any given time. So if I go to my left hand side where I have all my sources, you'll see this accordion um, list. So if I click on layouts, um, these are all the layouts I have pre-configured in the system already. And so let me just take one of these layouts and you simply drag it onto the wall. And what you'll notice is everything switches seamlessly. So this is the real time operating system that we're talking about and the light speed technology, right? So everything switches at one time. Uh, windows don't tear down one at a time. Everything gets switched at one time. So we just loaded kind of, uh, I call it the all layout, um, but you can basically load any layout you want here. So if I now want to recall that layout I saved earlier, which is called demo, I simply take that demo layout, drag it onto the wall, and now I have my demo layout. So this is kind of the basic uh, window functionality. Uh, I also want to show you the um, 
I also want to show you the layout launcher capability. And so once again, this got ported over from our Canvas side and allows you to easily load a layout uh, without any configuration, without logging in, right? You simply go to this web page, you select the button, which represents a layout, right? And it automatically switches. And for this particular page, you can user permission this, so you can have a set of users who can change the layouts from a set of presets, but they can't necessarily add different sources or change the configuration of the layout itself. So uh, that's a layout launcher. Uh, once again, you can load that website on any device that you want, uh, especially an iPad or some mobile device. Uh, so you can actually put it in front of the, uh, the video wall and easily manage what's going on. Um, so here is all of the different video walls that you have configured. Um, this is a two by two. I quickly want to show you what a one by one looks like. So this is a single display, um, carved up in quadrants. And once again, it's a simple drag and drop interface once you um, put it on there. Obviously, I don't have this, this video wall um, on the webcam camera, um, but it is available and it's the same functionality uh, no matter what video wall size you have. So I quickly want to go through um, some of the kind of other features that we have on this user interface. So this is uh, the favorites bar that we have here. Uh, these are kind of the functions that a lot of people use. And so we want to make it available to everybody very easily. The first one I'll talk about is the, uh, you can power up or power down the system remotely through this web page. You can clear all the windows off of the wall using this icon. You can save a layout using this. Um, this button is the layout launcher. So when you click this, it'll go to the layout launcher web page which is what you see here. This button is for viewing all. So sometimes you have a lot of inputs on the, uh, or let's say you have a lot of inputs and instead of dragging the sources on one by one, you click this button and all the sources now will show up on the video wall. Um, you have the ability to lock the video wall. And so this enables you to not have inadvertent um, movement of the windows. So sometimes you can easily move this, right? And now the video wall is um, not desired. And so this is, enables you to lock the video wall. And so nobody can actually um, touch the video or accidentally move the windows. We also have a feature called the background image. And so this enables you to load a picture directly onto the background. So if I didn't have any windows, um, up on the wall, it would have that background image. Um, this is very nice for kind of the corporate environment. If you do have customers coming in um, that want to, uh, that you want to kind of make a custom uh, meeting with them, you can have a custom background image, you can upload it into the system, and you can have that as a background image without any uh, windows open. The uh, this button is for showing some additional window information. So if I click this, it shows you the window ID for external control, the window position, and the window size. These two buttons here, or these two functions here, uh, lets you do uh, layout intervals. And so this allows you to cycle through all the layouts every 30 seconds or every 60 seconds or 15 seconds, uh, whatever you predefined. Once you set your uh, interval and you press on, it'll basically cycle through all the different layouts that you have. Um, this is one of the coolest features, I think, uh, which is called real-time mode. Um, some people call it preview or editing, uh, but this lets you um, edit what is happening on the video wall without it being real-time. So for example, if I want to move this top left window, um, as I move this window, everything happens in real-time. Now, if I want to turn this off, what you'll notice is that it's a kind of a different interface. So as I move windows around, right, uh, what you'll notice is it does not affect what is happening on the wall. In order to affect what's happening on the wall, I have to hit the supply button. So now this gives me ability to set up my video wall however I want without affecting what's going on. So if I want to load a layout on the wall, all right, once again, this does not affect the wall. Now, I can position all the different windows that I want. I'll make this on top. I can put on different sources. 
right? And then when I press apply, what you'll notice is instantly now all of that information that I just edited now gets pushed to the video wall. And so now if I click back on the real time video wall, I can resize this window. And now I'm back in real time mode. And so this is a really key feature, especially if you have a, a video wall that's in a very public setting. Um, this allows you to edit and set up all your layouts um, without affecting what is happening on the video wall. The last uh, feature I want to show you is the status monitoring page. And so in our J400 that is driving this video wall, what you'll notice is that we have one capture board here. Uh, we have on the left-hand side, right? So this is a physical representation of the chassis, which is very similar to what you see here. On the left-hand side is where all your inputs go. On the right-hand side is where you have three slots for output boards. We currently have uh, two output boards. So if I select one of these, right, it gives you all the information you ever wanted about these, uh, about this board, which includes uh, FPGA temperature, right, um, internal temperature, um, and what version it is, right, as well as um, you have the option of selecting any type of board or any power supply, right? It gives you all the available options um, that you want. You can see what the chassis temperature is remotely, and you can see what the fan speed to see if your server room is running operational or not. And one of the other features on this is the little green dots next to the individual um, HDMI connectors there. Uh, should a cable come uh, detached, those will turn red. Um, or if there's an, an issue with that system, an issue with that port, uh, that will also turn red and give you an easy indicator that that's something we need to look at right there. Okay, so we're going to switch back to the uh, presentation. Perfect. Thanks, Devin. Okay, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the chassis models in the J series. Uh, we have a J400 and a J600. The, um, they both have shared features. And so some of the shared features that they have is redundant N plus one power supplies. We have uh, high, availability, high availability active active CPU boards. Uh, we have hot swappable input boards, hot swappable output boards, as well as hot swappable chassis fans as well. On the J400, you have eight input slots here and you have three output slots on the J600, they uh, have, or that unit has 14 input slots and five output slots. Once again, um, they are, uh, they have the exact same boards that go into both chassis. So if you do want to order components, um, you have the option of just uh, stocking the boards as well as uh, stocking different chassis, op chassis options as well. And they all share the same components. J400 will be shipping in Q4. Uh, J600 will be following shortly thereafter, just from a nomenclature standpoint. J400 is four rack mount units tall. J600 is six rack mount units tall. And again, I want to stress what Devin talked about in terms of the flexibility of the system. Uh, you could very well start with a J400. Uh, and once you max out either your inputs or your outputs, your client or, or yourself might decide you need additional um, I.O., you can take the same boards that you had in your J400, install them in a new J600 chassis uh, and be up and running in almost no time without having to forklift out um, the entirety of the box uh, and start all over again. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit of our input and output boards. Uh, we plan in the first release to have uh, eight different boards available, four input boards and four output. So uh, the first one I want to talk about is a four channel HDMI um, up to 1920 by 1200 HDMI board. We also are going to offer a four channel DVI uh, 1920 by 1200 board, uh, a four channel HDMI 4K 30 board, and a two channel HDMI 4K 60 board, which is what you see here. Uh, on the output side, um, we're going to offer a four channel HDMI 1920 by 1200 board, a four channel DVI 1920 by 1200 board, a four channel 4K 30 board, and what's not in here because there's only three slots is a two channel uh, 4K 60 board. So I want to talk about a little bit, I'll uh, talk a little bit about what is 
coming next and what we plan to introduce. So we definitely plan on introducing additional input and output boards. Um, you know, uh, we recognize that this unit is part of a larger solution, right? And so sources may come from everywhere, come from additional server rooms within the server room or even workstations that are out on the floor. So cable links and cable runs uh, are especially important and to recognize coming from the system integrator side. So we do plan on in integrating HD base T um, because we do realize that people use uh, external extenders uh, before and after this chassis. And so this gives you ability to integrate all that into one solution, right? And so we plan to offer HD base T both on the input and output side, as well as a uh, HD option or full HD option and a 4K option. We also plan on introducing a uh, IP decoding card as well on the capture side. And this allows you to plug directly into the, the video network. So now this board, this input board of this chassis can now directly decode H.264 streams, which allows you to eliminate some of the external hardware that is meant for decoding. And you can do that natively on the system. Uh, and then also another platform that, that we're incredibly excited about based on kind of the modularity and flexibility of, of the J-Series is our Warp Blend platform. Uh, Jupiter currently has a Warp Blend solution. This will be our follow on to that. Uh, we can drive up to six projectors uh, at 4K60, uh, same input topology. So whatever you, whatever kind of inputs you want, do whatever manipulation you want, and then drive up to six projectors in the uh, in the 400 series, up to 10 projectors in the 600 series, at 4K60 uh, to do not only edge blending but any kind of surface warping that you would need to do based on kind of different uh, canvases you're going to paint it on. So with that, and before we get into the Q&A, quick summary. J600 is a cost-effective video wall appliance. We built it to be flex flexible and modular for really any deployment, any kind of application, any solution that requires um, an appliance-based uh, uh, solution. Uh, it is built with Jupyter Systems reliability. So even though we are kind of expanding our market reach a little bit, and moving into the appliance space, we design everything we do with the eye to 24-7, 365 reliability. Uh, and that continues into the J-Series platform. So uh, really, the J-Series is designed to be a very simple and easy to use, and very easy to configure in the field. Once again, the demo I just showed you took me about 15 minutes to set up and configure all the different sources and the layouts. Um, we support all the different display technologies that you have. Um, and so this allows you a lot of flexibility, especially on the system integrator and use end user side to either if it's a new construction, right, you obviously get to pick whatever display technology you want. But also if you're replacing a current system and you have displays already in there, uh, you don't have to replace those, right, because we recognize those are extremely expensive. And so replacing the, that the brain or the engine behind and driving those pixels, right, is extremely important. Um, this unit supports up to four video walls per chassis. It's an easy to use uh, control page, uh, drag and drop interface, right? The one touch layout launcher, as well as this is HTCP compatible. So any corporate or government projects that you have um, that you need to be compatible with for HTCP for the source side, um, this unit can definitely take care of that for you. Uh, I do wanna mention one thing. I think Justin will close it out. Um, uh, please give us your feedback, uh, any inquiries you have. Um, this is obviously a new product. So we wanna hear from you guys directly on what features you guys want and we can definitely implement it. This is something we plan to offer um, and move forward with in the future. Uh, so I'm very excited. I am as well. So thanks, Devin. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you all for, for joining us. We're coming up to the top of the hour. And again, as Devin said, you know, we fully expect um, our much more creative partners out in the field who are working with our clients to come up with new requirements, the new features, um, new needs for us. Um, and we want to be here to meet those needs. So if you have uh, questions, comments, please share them with us, share them with your sales folks, share them with jupiter.com. Thanks. Hope everybody has a great day.